Thank you, Mr. Guest. Good evening, Mr. Vika Advisors, friends and colleagues. We are the Vika and Seidel Foundation ISP team. My name is Brian. My name is Lee. My name is Sarah. And tonight we'll be presenting on our data portal for role by publication in the media. Just a quick overview of what we're presenting tonight. We'll start with some background on electrification goals in Libya, then go straight into our need statement, really the purpose of our project. We'll then outline our methodology, followed by the deliverables that we created, and then finally discuss the impact on our project. Having access to electricity creates a kind of potential. It includes us to accept in terms of business opportunities and subsequent economic growth problems. Access to better religious like electricity and social services is a benefit that everyone should receive. And furthermore, access to electricity, especially renewable energy, is essential to combat poverty. This is the main reason that our team created this data sharing platform in the hopes of using our knowledge to make an impact on people and students in the media. While access to electricity offers business and investment opportunities, there's much more and numerous more benefits of problems. The intimate connection for students, access to sophisticated organs and health facilities, hot water, and the ability to stay at night because everyone knows how important it is to cram all papers all the time. <laughs> Acknowledging the importance of electricity, to talk the Namibian Urban Forest Mission 2030, which is a development plan created in 1997, in hope of guiding the country in a sustainable direction. Supplying electricity to all health facilities and all schools is one of its main goals alongside improving economic standards and revaluing natural resource maintenance. So consequently, the Namibian government hopes to electrify all public schools by the year 2030, according to the Rural Electricity Distribution Master Plan. But after implementing the plan, the country has experienced a substantial growth in terms of the amount of rural communities with access to electricity. Starting in 1997, all the members of other rural communities have access to electricity and its benefits. However, as of November 2018, more than 20% of the rural communities have access to electric, electricity in their household. However, as you can see, it, even though there's a substantial growth during the past 10 years, there's still much more work to do. So the main question is how does how the students like us and how does our team fit in this grand scheme of things? So this is a large scale project and large scale. <coughs> There are numerous stakeholders involved in the project, including the government ministries, such as the Ministry of Mines and Energy and the Ministry of Education. Local businesses, including the three regional electricity distributors, and the non-government organizations, which is the Hans the Foundation, which is our project sponsor. Having so many partners involved in this um, countrywide project requires a clear and effective communication method. However, the main issue is that with our rural electricity, it lacks the agreement between all stakeholders on how to communicate and how to share data effectively. This led to several shortcomings in the past in distributing critical information in a timely manner. So this probably determined the need for our team to come in and collaborate with over a dozen stakeholders to find the most effective way to uh, share this data. And what that meant is that our team was constantly in communication with and harmonizing all the suggestions of all these stakeholders to create this data portal that would incorporate all the information that would be needed for rural electrification. So at its heart, the data portal is made up of three components. Past efforts, current progress, and future plans. Past efforts basically describes which buildings and communities have already been electrified. Current progress denotes what organizations are currently active, whether they're installing a new photovoltaic plant or they're expanding a power line. And finally, future plans ensures that there's no duplication of efforts by those stakeholders, which is a waste of time and money. And the, by incorporating all three of these components into the data portal, it paints the picture of uh, electrification progress in Namibia and whether the country is meeting their Vision 2030 goals. So how did we decide which features and elements to add to the data portal? Uh, we devised the methodology to determine uh, which features and elements were most important according to the stakeholders who will be the future users of the data portal. The first step of our methodology for our interviews, we interview uh, each of the major stakeholders of the project. Uh, then we collect the data uh, problems for the data portal that we uh, put on the data portal. And our final step was to distribute a survey asking for feedback on our data portal. So for each interview, we identified themes and listed questions that we uh, thought would produce uh, valuable discussion during the interview. And then during the interview, we would ask those questions and take notes on the interview. 
following the interview, we will make modifications to the themes and the questions uh, based on which ones produced a valuable uh, discussion. And then we will bring those back on the next interview and do the process over again. We gather our data uh, for each interview. We would discuss with the stakeholder what types of data they would like to see in the data portal or use with them, and also what types of data they would provide to the data portal that would be used with other stakeholders. Following the interview, we would request the data, usually by email. And once we received the data from the stakeholders, we would consolidate with all the other data that we had acquired, and uh, once it's all in one place, we would put it on the data portal. So for our survey, we distributed the survey, uh, asked for feedback on the data portal prototype from the uh, stakeholders that we'll be using in the future, asking uh, if it is effective and user friendly. Once we get the responses from when, when we got the responses from this survey, we analyzed those responses and uh, made modifications that are this in the data portal based on our analysis of feedback. So next we'll talk about the deliverables, the deliverables that we will hand over to our sponsor, Hans Seidel, on Thursday. Um, so our first deliverable, the main deliverable, is the data portal itself. And after the data portal, we have the user manual and the administrator manual. And we also have a set of recommendations. So first we will talk about the data portal. So the data portal is made up of five, five main capabilities and functions. And the first one we're going to discuss is the electrification status. So what makes the electrification status dashboard really effective is the incorporation of colors <coughs> and shapes. So as you can see on this map, it doesn't really tell you much information, but when you incorporate shapes and colors, it tells you the user a lot more. So as you can see in the key, the colors represent the electrification status, and the shapes represent the type of building. So circles are schools, triangles are health buildings, and uh, plus signs are government buildings. The next uh, important functionality includes the tooltip functionality. This uh, capability is important because it allows the user to see more specific information about each location. So with this function, you're able to if you highlight over a specific building, a box pops up and more information comes up uh, for the user to then read. So some of the information it may give you is the electrification status, uh, the years electrified, uh, what the RAD, who the RAD is, and other information like that. And this is really important, uh, especially in this manner because it helps give the user more information without cluttering up the page. The next capability is the incorporation of power lines. So you're able to overlay the power lines and specific buildings. So in this case, uh, we're showing the uh, specific schools. So there are a few different functions with uh, being able to do this. And one example is being able to zoom in and measure the distance between a specific location and the closest power line. And this is really important because it can save a lot of time and money um, because it will, uh, for example, in the future, uh, people will not necessarily have to go out there and measure the distance from location to the power line. They'll be able to do it just right in their office. And next step, uh, incorporation is the satellite view. The satellite view allows individuals to visualize the exact layout of the specific facility. So in this example, on the top left, there's different map types. And as you see, we selected the satellite view, and you're able to zoom in to a specific uh, facility. So we're zooming into a facility, and you're able to see the number of buildings that that facility is made up of. And this may be important in case you're trying to calculate how much electricity you might need for the future when you're trying to electrify it, and you're able to see the amount of uh, surrounding space of the facility, which may be important in case you are trying to bring solar panels uh, a lot of solar panels for, um, to bring electricity. So these are just a few examples of why it might be important uh, to use this uh, capability. And the final corporation includes socioeconomic uh, statistics. And this is made up of five different dashboards uh, with relevant data such as demographics, uh, household income, uh, and money spent on education. And these are just a few examples of some of the information that is provided, and this, all this information is used to assist um, decision makers on where to electrify next. So it allows organizations to compare
care region by region and to prioritize where to uh, put help and provide the external help. So the next deliverable we're going to discuss um, are the manuals. So there are two main manuals. Uh, the first one is the user manual and the second one is the administrative manual. Uh, the user manual has two main purposes. The first one is to provide step-by-step -step instructions on specific functionalities and just how to navigate the data portal all together. And the second purpose is to provide instructions on how to update the data portal so that when the time comes and information changes, uh, the organization will be able to do so. So our second manual is the administrative manual, which is the manual for the administrative data portal. Basically what this manual is, it's a sets of uh, like step-by-step -step instructions on pretty much everything that we did to create the data portal on software that we use. Um, and the, the main goal of this is um, to promote the sustainability of our data portal so that uh, when we leave, we can end off smoothly and, and the work will continue. Um, and to do that, we need to, we need to completely uh, give ownership over to the future administrators. And uh, to do that properly, they really need to be able to modify the data portal however uh, they see fit. So they need to be able to do everything that we did to, to create in the first place. So our final deliverable is the recommendations that we are going to provide to our sponsor and all of the stakeholders. So our team created a set of broad technical and software related recommendations. However, today we're going to focus on the broad recommendations because they have the most impact on future growth of the data portal. So the first of these broad recommendations is a uniform data storage method. So we recommend that the future administrator of the data portal create something called a structured query language database, SQL database, which is able to be placed on the same website as the data portal and update that information in real time. So currently our information is stored in a few different locations. This will allow all the information to be stored in one location and also ensure that the administrator can uh, basically assign roles of who is who's, uh, responsible for updating certain pieces of information. Our second recommendation is for all the stakeholders to come together and agree on how often the information within the data portal should be updated. This is really important to make sure that the data portal has current and accurate information because if someone's planning to electrify a school, they're going to want to know if a power line has yeah, just been recently updated or if there's already been closer to that school. You want the most accurate and updated information when making these decisions. And similarly, the third recommendation we provided was for stakeholders to have regular meetings to discuss any changes to the data portal, general future electrification plans, and to discuss any of the roles or responsibilities of change. So, these are just a few limitations that we experienced when we were creating our data portal. It includes the ability of data and the timeliness of receiving data. So a lot of teams are able to find a lot of information from uh, older five to 10 year old uh, ministry or government documents. They, since because of their time, they decided to look for more updated information. And that's why we went to many of these government ministries and conducted interviews to require them more updated information. However, because the government ministries had to request permission to share this information with us because it's going online someday, this process took a lot of time, and also they had to compile all that information for us. So now all the information that we requested was able to be put into the data portal by the time that we completed our project, which is this week. So throughout our project effort, we collected the feedback on how our data portal project could impact the rural electrification effort in the media. So a comment made by the Ministry of Education, Arts, and Culture shows that the scale can sub data portal to provide information on the go. The country director of the Heinz Center Foundation said that the data portal is a huge opportunity for strategic planning. The local consulting company who applies the electrification effort mentioned that this is a best method for the government ministries, the local businesses, and all the non-profit organizations to communicate and coordinate accordingly. And finally, this project is a heck of a contribution to the rural electrification effort. So before we finish, we'd like to thank you, everyone who helped get us through this project. Our awesome advisor, Professor Dumont, Professor Eddie, our project, our project sponsor, the Einstein Foundation, who gave us this, this opportunity to make a difference. Our supervisor, Mr. Robin Saka, from the Einstein Foundation, and Mr. Leonard Bayer from the Ministry of Mines and Energy, who helped coordinate numerous interviews and distributed surveys. And consequently, all the interviews, all the participating key stakeholders who help provide feedback on our data portal. And finally, our goal is Treasure Pele Pele and everyone from the 1919 grants who is helping this trip memorable. Thank you very much for the presentation.
on a lack of that database is why one part of the country has clearly been developed and it has been electrified and the uh, other part of the country doesn't seem to get that. So that's, I mean, that could be definitely part of the reason. However, if you were to go back to that slide, you can see that there are so many schools in that northern region. And if you've ever been to those northern parts in Namibia, we got close when we traveled to one of the regional electricity distributors. But it's, there's just so many smaller schools that are harder to get to. So that's a major reason why not all of those have electricity. If they're in uh, larger uh, communities or cities, then those are the ones that get electrified first. So it's a school with only 25 students, and it takes 30 minutes on a dirt road to get out to, then usually those are some of the later schools that are electrified. So this is to help those schools be electrified sooner, whether that be electricity grids extended or